Sulfonamide is a functional group a part of a molecule that is the basis of several groups of drugs, which are called sulfonamides, sulfur drugs or sulfur drugs. The original antibacterial sulfonamides are synthetic non-antibiotic, antimicrobial agents that contain the sulfonamide group. Some sulfonamides are also devoid of antibacterial activity, e.g., the anticonvulsant sultiame. The sulfonylureas and thiazide diuretics are newer drug groups based upon the antibacterial sulfonamides. Allergies to sulfonamides are common. The overall incidence of adverse drug reactions to sulfur antibiotics is approximately 3%, close to penicillin, hence medications containing sulfonamides are prescribed carefully. It is important to make a distinction between sulfur drugs and other sulfur-containing drugs and additives, such as sulfates and sulfites, which are chemically unrelated to the sulfonamide group, and do not cause the same hypersensitivity reactions seen in the sulfonamides. Nowadays, while sulfonamides seldom appear in the prescriptions written by doctors in developed countries, sulfonamides are still common antimicrobial medications in developing countries owing to their low price. Function Antimicrobial In bacteria, antibacterial sulfonamides act as competitive inhibitors of the enzyme dihydropteroate synthase DHPS, an enzyme involved in folate synthesis. Sulfonamides are therefore bacteriostatic and inhibit growth and multiplication of bacteria, but do not kill them. Humans, in contrast to bacteria, acquire folate vitamin B9 through the diet. Other uses Sulfonamides are used to treat allergies and cough, as well as antifungal and antimalarial functions. The moiety is also present in other medications that are not antimicrobials, including thiazide diuretics including hydrochlorothiazide, metolazone, and indipamide, among others, loop diuretics including furosemide, bumetanide, and torsamide, acetazolamide, sulfonylureas including glipizide, glyburide, among others, and some COX-2 inhibitors e.g., celecoxib. Sulfur salazine, in addition to its use as an antibiotic, is also used in the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease. History Sulfonamide drugs were the first antibacterials to be used systemically, and paved the way for the antibiotic revolution in medicine. The first sulfonamide, trade named Prontosil, was a prodrug. Experiments with Prontosil began in 1932 in the laboratories of Bayer AG, at that time a component of the huge German chemical trust IG Farben. The Bayer team believed that coal tar dyes which are able to bind preferentially to bacteria and parasites might be used to attack harmful organisms in the body. After years of fruitless trial and error work on hundreds of dyes, a team led by physician, researcher Gerhard Domig working under the general direction of Farben executive Heinrich Hallen finally found one that worked, a red dye synthesized by biochemist Joseph Clara that had remarkable effects on stopping some bacterial infections in mice. The first official communication about the breakthrough discovery was not published until 1935, more than two years after the drug was patented by Clara and his research partner Fritz Meech. Prontosil, as Bayer named the new drug, was the first medicine ever discovered that could effectively treat a range of bacterial infections inside the body. 
It had a strong protective action against infections caused by streptococci, including blood infections, childbed fever, and erysipelas, and a lesser effect on infections caused by other cocci. However, it had no effect at all in the test tube, exerting its antibacterial action only in live animals. Later, it was discovered by Bovet, Federico Nitti and J. and T. H. Jacques Trefauel, a French research team led by Ernest Forno at the Pasteur Institute, that the drug was metabolized into two pieces inside the body, releasing from the inactive dye portion a smaller, colorless, active compound called sulfonylamide. The discovery helped establish the concept of bioactivation. And dashed the German corporation's dreams of enormous profit. The active molecule sulfonylamide or sulfur had first been synthesized in 1906 and was widely used in the dye making industry. Its patent had since expired and the drug was available to anyone. The result was a sulfur craze. For several years in the late 1930s, hundreds of manufacturers produced tens of thousands of tons of myriad forms of sulfur. This and non-existent testing requirements led to the elixir sulfonylamide disaster in the fall of 1937, during which at least 100 people were poisoned with diethylene glycol. This led to the passage of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act in 1938 in the United States. As the first and only effective antibiotic available in the years before penicillin, sulfur drugs continued to thrive through the early years of World War II. They are credited with saving the lives of tens of thousands of patients, including Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Jr. son of U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Winston Churchill. Sulfur had a central role in preventing wound infections during the war. American soldiers were issued a first aid kit containing sulfur pills and powder, and were told to sprinkle it on any open wound. The sulfonylamide compound is more active in the protonated form. The drug has very low solubility and sometimes can crystallize in the kidneys, due to its first pKa of around 10. This is a very painful experience, so patients are told to take the medication with copious amounts of water. Newer analogous compounds prevent this complication because they have a lower pKa, around 5 to 6, making them more likely to remain in a soluble form. Many thousands of molecules containing the sulfonylamide structure have been created since its discovery by one account, over 5,400 permutations by 1945, yielding improved formulations with greater effectiveness and less toxicity. Sulfur drugs are still widely used for conditions such as acne and urinary tract infections, and are receiving renewed interest for the treatment of infections caused by bacteria resistant to other antibiotics. <laughs> Preparation Sulfonamides are prepared by the reaction of a sulfonyl chloride with ammonia or an amine. Certain sulfonamides or are sometimes mixed with the drug trimethoprim, which acts against dihydrofolate reductase. As of 2013, the Republic of Ireland is the largest exporter worldwide of sulfonamides, accounting for approximately 32% of total exports. Topic: <laughs> List of sulfonamides. Trimethoprim. Sulfadiazine. Azulfidine, sulfasalazine. Topic: Children's antibacterial drugs. Sulfafurazole, in pediazole. Topic: Antimicrobials. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Sulfonylureas, anti-diabetic agents. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Diuretics. Topic: <laughs> Anticonvulsants. Ethoxylamide Sultiame Zonosamide Topic Dermatologicals Maffinide Topic Antiretrovirals Amprinavir HIV protease inhibitor Darunavir HIV protease inhibitor Deliverdine non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor Fosamprinavir HIV protease inhibitor Tiprunavir HIV protease inhibitor Topic Hepatitis C antivirals Asunaprevir NS3 4A protease inhibitor Beclobuvir NS5 BRNA polymerase inhibitor Dasabuvir NS5 BRNA polymerase inhibitor Grazaprevir NS3 4A protease inhibitor Paritaprevir NS3 4A protease inhibitor Simprevir NS3 4A protease inhibitor Topic stimulant Azabon Topic other Topic Side effects Sulfonamides have the potential to cause a variety of untoward reactions, including urinary tract disorders, hemopoietic disorders, porphyria, and hypersensitivity reactions. When used in large doses, they may cause a strong allergic reaction. The most serious of these are classified as severe cutaneous adverse reactions i.e. scars and include the Stevens-Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis also known as Lyle syndrome, the Dress syndrome, and a not quite as serious scars reaction, acute generalized ecanthematous pustulosis. Any one of these scars may be triggered by certain sulfonamides. Approximately 3% of the general population have adverse reactions when treated with sulfonamide antimicrobials. Of note is the observation that patients with HIV have a much higher prevalence, at about 60%. Hypersensitivity reactions are less common in non antibiotic sulfonamides, and, though controversial, the available evidence suggests those with hypersensitivity to sulfonamide antibiotics do not have an increased risk of hypersensitivity reaction to the non antibiotic agents. A key component to the allergic response to sulfonamide antibiotics is the arilamine group at N4, found in sulfamethoxazole, sulfasalazine, sulfadiazine, and the antiretrovirals amprinavir and fosamprinavir. Other sulfonamide drugs do not contain this arilamine group. Available evidence suggests that patients who are allergic to arilamine sulfonamides do not cross react to sulfonamides that lack the arilamine group, and may therefore safely take non arilamine sulfonamides. It has therefore been argued that the terms sulfonamide allergy or sulfur allergy are misleading and should be replaced by a reference to a specific drug e.g. cotrimoxazole allergy two regions of the sulfonamide antibiotic chemical structure are implicated in the hypersensitivity reactions associated with the class the first is the N1 heterocyclic ring, which causes a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. 
The second is the N4 amino nitrogen that, in a stereospecific process, forms reactive metabolites that cause either direct cytotoxicity or immunologic response. The nonantibiotic sulfonamides lack both of these structures. The most common manifestations of a hypersensitivity reaction to sulfur drugs are rash and hives. However, there are several life-threatening manifestations of hypersensitivity to sulfur drugs, including Stevens-Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, agranulocytosis, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, fulminant hepatic necrosis, and acute pancreatitis, among others. See also Antibiotic Timeline of antibiotics Elixisulfanilamide Dihydropteroate synthase PABA